to a well-designed business. My name is Luann Nigara, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. Together with my husband, Vince, and our partner, Bill, we have grown our company, Window Works, from the ground up. So I know and I understand the challenges you face in running your interior design business. I also know that your talent alone isn't enough to ensure your success. So on this podcast, we talk about strategies and practical steps to help you grow your business. But make no mistake about it, we have our share of fun here too, mixed in with those aha moments that I love so much. This isn't fluff. Nobody has time for that. Whether you are a new interior designer or a seasoned designer, I am here to help you create and to manage the kind of interior design firm that you dream of. It's straight talk and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi, welcome to another episode of A Well-Designed Business. Today, I'm delighted to introduce you to David Phoenix. David Phoenix is a celebrated and influential Los Angeles designer known for thoughtful, modern luxury and livability. With a quintessential American point of view, David finds inspiration from a myriad of styles, looking back through history as he creates spaces for today. Often, you email me and ask me, how do I know what my only is, Luann? Like Fred Burns tells us to figure out, right? Or you say, how do I know how to know how I'm different from other interior designers? The germ of it is here in this interview. Finding something that is personal and authentic to you is the beginning of it. In the interview, I asked David specifically about this and what it is about him. What is it that is unique about his point of view that he brings into his interior design because this is where you start when you are beginning to personify your only for yourself and your brand. You start with you, your person, your inner self, and then from there you can layer your personal point of view and create your design firms only. David has an international clientele of celebrities, royalty, business magnets, and discerning homeowners, including Maria Shriver and the former Los Angeles mayor, Richard Riordan, and actor Rob Lowe, whose home was featured on the cover of Architectural Digest. In addition to Architectural Digest, David's work has been in Traditional Home, California Homes, Veranda, and Lux Magazine. His Bel Air project was featured on the cover of The Rob Report, and it was awarded the ultimate home of the year. The Hollywood Reporter selected David as one of the top 25 influential interior designers of Los Angeles. He was also recognized as one of the top influencers in the home design industry in 2017. The Pacific Design Center selected David to receive the 2017 Star of Design Award in the field of interior design. In addition to his design projects, David also shares his vision of livable luxury through his furniture, decorative accessories, and lighting collections in partnership with Hickory Chair. And I'm just going to say, and drum roll please, David just launched his new fabric and trim collection with our beloved Kravit. So if your Kravit rep hasn't shown it to you yet, get on the phone and ask for some memos. It's a gorgeous line, and I am certain you will find it versatile and easy to place in your interior design projects. Before I get to this conversation with with David, I want to remind you of two things. The first is always, as I always say to you, show some love to Kravit because they have been with this podcast from the very beginning, sharing my vision for it and being an integral partner in making this happen. And secondly, don't forget the gift to you from Kravit as a listener of the podcast. You can get 10% off any one purchase of Kravit fabric, wallpaper, or trim by using the code AWDB10 at checkout. That's right. Have you used your 10% off code yet? If it's if you haven't, it is high time you did. Be sure to specify Kravit product for your next project. And in addition to the outstanding product and customer service, you'll have a cool 10%, which you can and should invest in a little pick-me-up for yourself or your business. So whether you use it to go get a massage or you run some Facebook ads with it, use the code AWDB. 
CB10 at checkout. And then be sure to thank your Kravit rep the next time you see him or her in your studio. All righty. I invite you to sit back and enjoy this conversation with David. And I'm just going to warn you, fair warning, be prepared to be charmed. Hi, David. Thanks so much for joining me on a well-designed business today. Good morning. Thank you for having me. I'm looking forward to this conversation, David, because you and I, number one, we share Kravit Inc. in common. We're going to talk about how you've just launched a fabric line with Kravit real time in August of 2018. And so we're having this conversation just around that same time. Um, And also, I'm looking forward to it because I just want to selfishly for me and my listeners, we're always trying to think about what makes us different and what makes, what can we say to the consumer and to the potential client, something about us that sets us apart from each other, right? In a great way, not in a competitive way, but honestly, that draws somebody to us rather than someone else. And when I was getting ready for our interview, in addition to looking at those fabrics, which we're going to talk about, I saw a sentence on your website and it said that, you have a quintessential American point of view. And I just wondered, what does that mean to you when you say that on your website? How, ex- express that for us. Well, I think that uh, uh, it's a good question. And I I feel that um, my approach is, you know, I'm from New England originally, and I moved to California many years ago. So I feel like I have you know, I'm really proud to be from New England and I love my roots there and there's a lot of history and a lot of tradition. And then, you know, moving out here, everything was kind of new and big and more space. And so I feel that, um, you know, I've got the best of both worlds. So we've got kind of the, you know, my deep rooted traditional kind of roots. And then out here, you know, with designers that were inspirational to me, like Michael Taylor and, Rose Tarlow and, you know, just so, uh, you know, so I think that um, the look is more of, um, it's kind of a a blend. So it's kind of, it's kind of the East and West and I kind of put my own spin on it. So it's classic, it's comfortable, it's uh, traditional. I've got a little, you know, nod to the past and looking forward to, you know, I love contemporary things mixed in also. So. Okay. Okay. So what I'm hearing then is that for you, American, is that whole East, you know, the Northeast philosophy, that way of feeling how rooted to America, the beginning of America, basically, is what you're referring to, it sounds like. Yeah, I mean, that's where I'm from. And Mm -hmm. so that's kind of what I know and what, you know, growing up there, you know, obviously, you know, Paul Revere started there. So it's (laughs) like, I think we all, everything started there. So I think that it's, American is really, you know, like when I travel around, you know, there's, it's like, you know, you go to Atlanta or Dallas and there's such great architecture there and everyone has. So, I mean, I really I love all parts of the country and I've worked all over the country and I feel that, you know, it's um, American is is somewhat traditional. But, you know, we've got great contemporary American mm-hmm. design. Mm-hmm. So so I, I think it's not it's um, it's uh I hope that answered the question. It does <laughs> answer the question because the thing is that the whole point of the question, the whole point of the exploration is to find what it is that your point of view is. And that's the thing. Mm-hmm. So we recently, I, I recently talked with Chris Ramey on the podcast and that was episode 345. And Chris Ramey specializes in marketing to the affluent demographic. And he literally said that the top level interior designers, the celebrity, the, the the iconic interior designers all have a point of view. It was exactly what he said. Mm -hmm, And mm -hmm. so that's what you're expressing. And then, of course, I'll just share. I just recently was at a conference in Philadelphia all weekend. I live here in New Jersey, only 15 miles outside, 13 miles outside of New York City. And so I'm in the city all the time for different projects with various clients and so forth. And even just Philadelphia just feels that little bit more, like you said, like that colonialism, mm-hmm. that traditional. Mm-hmm. It was like, mm-hmm. I'm standing there and I, and I am, I grew up outside of Philly. So that's like heart to me right there. But I also was a huge avid reader of the whole revolutionary period of time. History is my second favorite thing other than business. Yeah. And um, just standing, I was like, wow, Ben Franklin 
actually was here. I literally had that thought. Yeah. I was literally no, like, Ben amazing. Franklin stood here. <laughs> it's crazy. It's amazing. It's amazing. And when you go to, you know, different, you know, just being around that, I think it's important for any designer just to go and see all those great mm -hmm. sites with great architecture. And it's, it's where it started. Mm -hmm. And so you can, you know, I mean, they teach it in design school, architecture school, I would imagine all these great, you know, Mount Vernon and, you know, there's such great things to soak up. And that's really my education is by exposure. So I think that, you know, that's, uh, yeah, that's very important. Well, I want to say two things there. I'm writing a note because I don't want to forget the second one. The first one I just want to say is what's interesting, and this speaks to the point of view, is that I know that, and I know you're going to agree with me on this, that a designer listening could be thinking to him or herself, you see, when I go to San Francisco, I feel like that's the essence of America because that was the gold rush era and that's the pioneering spirit, right? So it's really, it is very subjective to you but they think the lesson is is figure out what your point of view is and then lean into it right because it, it there's like you said there's architecture and jobs it just that's what speaks to you is our point that we're getting from right. this right i love it okay the other thing i just heard you say in there and i gotta pick it out you when you said when they teach about architecture in design school and then you said i would imagine they teach mm -hmm. that did you not mm -hmm. go to school david <clears throat> no i'm self-taught i never went to sc uh, school i i didn't have that uh you know i couldn't afford that luxury of going to college and uh design school so i did go to one day and i was very proud of myself <laughs> signing up for night school as i was working and uh I uh, often tell the story how I, you know, it was like design 101. I went into the class and I was excited. I had my notebook and, you know, it was a big deal for me because I was, you know, not a great student growing up. I mean, it was a great student if I applied myself and if I was interested, if I wasn't, forget about it. So anyway, long story short, I was in design school and it was a long class. I had worked all day and then I went to the market afterwards and I ran into the professor at the market and I was, you know, excited to see her and, you know, I wanted to kind of make a connection with her. So I went up to her and said, excuse me. I said, I'm really, you know, I'm excited. I'm in your class and, you know, I don't mean to bother you, but I just want to let you know that I'm taking your class. And I said, question, I said, you know, do you work in a firm or, you know, um, what's, what's your story? And she's looked at me and like kind of snotty. And she goes, I don't, I don't, uh, I'm not a designer. I just teach it. So of course I was devastated. <laughs> right, Cause you're like all excited, right? All excited. This is going to be it, you know? And so I said, okay, I never went back. I'm like, because she what? had no passion for what she was doing. So Nothing. you couldn't connect no. with it. You're just she's, like, forget it. Yeah. Yeah. She's reading out of the book. I said, well, I'm not going to spend three years of my life sitting in a classroom with someone that doesn't even know you know, but it doesn't care. It doesn't, that doesn't she, care. she didn't express that. Yeah. You wanted the connection. Yeah. That's yeah. interesting. And so then that was it. And so, okay. Yeah. So, whoa. Okay. Cause I, I don't know how many of our friends listening have seen your website and seen your work and seen this fabric line that you've developed. And you also have other product lines. I mean, whoa, no education. So you None. must have had a like you 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 had the education uh, you know in experience then right it must have been through well, tell, tell us about how does it, how does design happen for you then and how, where did the interest come so you hadn't gone I, to college how you just what was that as a kid I was interested in architecture I used to buy these books where you'd send away for plans house plans and you know I had a pretty rendering of the house and I had the floor plans and I would fantasize about you know being in one of those houses and mm. I would get my little grid paper and I'd trace over it and I'd change the floor plan. And, you know, it was kind of, uh, you know, it was, it was kind of an escape for me. And, uh, and then I, I always like pretty things. Am I, um, interesting enough at, you know, interviewing my grandmother a few times, just asking her about our family. My great, great grandmother had a furniture store and um in our town which i didn't know and so that was you oh. know i found that out much later so it was kind of like you know uh, you know and i have some a couple of pieces from that place and so it was interesting um finding that out later and then um i just like beautiful things 
I just always was attracted to furniture as a kid I used to rearrange my room I would just uh you know I was I was you know, and I, you're I just looked, like all the rest of them <laughs> yeah so I didn't really you know I didn't know at the time how to you know translate that but um and I never would have you know if I would have told you you know if I if I could have predicted the future I would have shortchanged myself because I, I don't think I would have ever in my wildest dreams thought oh here I'm going to be talking to Luann on a podcast about <laughs> your design or have a collection or anything like that so right right that's uh, a big 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 difference from sitting in your bedroom and re yeah. yes yes yeah. Yeah. interesting yeah, sure. sure so and you had it's, already had, um, obviously the interest is there from a young child, but had you already started to work in the industry when you then learned about your great, great grandmother's furniture store or was you still a child when you learned that? No, it was, I, I was, it was much later wow. and, um, yeah, so I, um, I have this lamp, which I still have, and it's this big kind of Majolica lamp that she had, and my grandmother had in her front window, and so I, I still have it. I have it in my entryway, mm -hmm. and it's uh, so it's kind of like a little, um, you know, it's it's nice to have something like it's that. It's like I'm yeah. I'm where I'm supposed to be, sort of thing, right? It's like a little exactly. Yeah, it like welcome, I ended up. It welcomes up... me, yeah, at yeah. night when I come home. It's nice. It's on. I can it... see that. It's sort of like you know, because listen, hearing that you you didn't go to college, that experience with that, I, I didn't go to college either, and so I I relate there in that it's when you don't have the opportunities. Uh, at a younger age, you know, it's not that you're not smart. It's not you're, that you, you know, whatever you just, whatever your circumstances are, the, the universe doesn't line up for everybody, right? It just doesn't. No. And no. Um, to, I could see how that could be so at the same time calming, but at the same time energizing to know that, wow, what a wiggly, windy road. And I sort of ended up exactly where I was supposed to be. That's what it feels like to me when I think about looking at your grandmother's lamp, right? Yeah, right. No, it's, it's yeah, it's, um, uh, it's definitely um, at the time starting out, I didn't know it, but it's definitely a passion. And mm -hmm. I love, I love fabric. I love furniture. I love art. I love great architecture. I mean, I, guess I'm a frustrated architect secretly, but I do love, I do love it. I love it. So now you know that there are dozens of other self-taught designers listening yes. that are high-fiving right now, right? And then I there's, hope. yes, right? And then there's also so many more that are thinking, whoa, self-taught and this level of success, like you said, you never could have even, you wouldn't have even have put it on a plan for yourself if you were going to, because it just seems so unattainable. But what's, what's the in-between? Connect the dots for us. Does it start with a, a one or two job experiences? Is there a lucky break? Like what get us from, have no idea how this is going to happen to here I am, David Phoenix. I, um, was looking for a job, um, well, I moved here when I was 17 to Los to California, and I was sort of a runaway. I left home early, and so I saved up my money. I bought a one-way ticket to L.A., and um, I, you know, I kind of grew up in the restaurant business, you know, working in the restaurants. And um, so I, I thought I was going to become a chef. And sort of my mentor, the last couple years living in New England, um, had lined up a job for me in New York. And I was going to be like, you know, kind of peeling potatoes mm -hmm. uh, in the basement of a restaurant. So, of course, I didn't think that was really for me. <laughs> uh, after going there, seeing the conditions, I was like, oh, I don't think so. I'm going to make $200. there was $200. no furniture there. <laughs> no furniture. No, no. Potato peeler. Um, so I decided I always wanted to be in California, even since, I, you know, when I was tracing over those floor plans. And so I used to watch... Um, the Dinah Shore show. And, ah. uh, and so she was kind of, you know, a lot of young people don't know who she is, but um, <laughs> she was the talk show host of the seventies. She was kind of the Ellen of the seventies and she had a white sectional and she had stars over and she lived in Beverly Hills. She was dating Burt Reynolds at the time, who was the sexiest man of <laughs> Alive, God rest his soul. I can't believe and, you're old enough to remember yeah, all this. You don't yeah, look it. Yeah. And so I thought, you know, I want what Dinah's got. She's really got it going on. So I thought this is where I need to be. So I bought a one-way ticket to California, to L.A., 
And I landed a job at Disneyland, the happiest place on earth, and I worked at the bakery. And so I thought, this is great. I've got a good job. I have benefits. And so it still wasn't, you know, it wasn't a fit. It wasn't, you know, getting up at four in the morning to make brownies. I was like, you know, this I don't want to do this the rest of my life, you know. And um, so I was talking to a friend of mine. He goes, why don't you go into the design center? There's a job there for you. And it was, I said, oh, really? And he said, yeah. So I went in and I marched right into Brunchwick and I said, hi, I'd like a job. <laughs> and they said, well, great. We have a job opening for a sample librarian. Here, come with me. And so I went into the back room and, you know, it's miles and miles and miles of samples, you know, coordinated by color, by, you know, skew number. And you had to have them all put away by 930 in the morning. And this gal that was the manager there, she had worked there 37 years and she was, had, you know, a real, uh, you know, ran a tight ship, let's say. So, uh, here we go. I started there and it was literally, and, and every day UPS would drop off, you know, literally thousands of samples and bags and people would return them. And, you know, at the time they used to charge you $25 for a memo sample if you didn't return them. Right. I remember. I remember. Yeah. So here it's like Lucy and Ethel with the conveyor belt with <laughs> fabrics and it literally I mean I just felt like they were just like multiplying in the bags I mean it was you know being 19 at the time working there you know it was just whoa it was a lot so anyway I did that I worked at Pierre Du for the two Pierres when they owned it and that was great and that was really when I kind of thought okay this is like a serious job in the design business they had antiques and it was great. It was fantastic. And um, I loved it. And I had a slipcover business on the side because in the 80s, that was the thing. It was, you know, Shabby Chic was kind of starting and everyone wanted to slipcover because, oh, it's, it's you know, less expensive than recovering. So uh, so I had like a little workroom I worked with and, and we had slipcover. People would come in and say, oh, I want to make a slipcover. I said, well, I do that on the side. I can meet you after five. And so that's kind of how I start that little <laughs> venture. And then, um, then I moved to LA. I was, that was in Orange County. Okay. And then I moved to Los Angeles in 1990 and I got my first job, Jerry Magnin, who had the Ralph Lauren franchise at the time. And he opened a huge store in Rodeo. Um, I worked there when they opened that store in the home furnishings department, um, for a couple of years. And so I kind of had a little paper Rolodex and I would, you know, keep track of my clients. And then on my days off, I'd still did the little slip covers. And I would also, uh, I would also, you know, source things. I'd go around and, you know, just kind of find things and people would say, oh, I'm looking for this. And I'd say, oh, you know, you might go over here or whatever. So that's sort of how I, that's, that is how I started, you know, really. It's, it's, here's what I'm hearing. Here's what I'm yeah. hearing. I'm hearing grit. Yeah. I'm hearing grit, hearing grit, I'm hearing focus, I'm hearing determination, I'm hearing resilience. You know, yep. you're, we're, we, you, this description, we have to keep in mind that this happened between 17 and 19 years of age. <laughs> this isn't yep. like between and no 30 internet. and 40. Right, right. No internet. Yes, no internet. this is so awesome. Uh, so um, let's see, that brought me up to my 20s, I think. Uh, <laughs> Then I worked for a little shop over in Brentwood. It's like a designer shop that had, you know, she did a little bit of design, great accessories, great home furnishings. And so I worked there and then I was let go after Christmas and um, I was devastated. I didn't have a job. I was driving a beat up yellow Volkswagen bug from 1971 with wood headlights. <laughs> uh, it wasn't pretty. And so uh, that was in 1993. And uh, I, I didn't know what to do. So at the time I was, uh, I was looking at the classified section, you know, the newspaper mm. and, uh, my best friend who I met here in Los Angeles, um, ha was dying. He had AIDS and in the nineties, you know, it was really, I mean, our whole industry was mm. virtually wiped out mm -hmm. in many ways. So uh, a lot of industries were, and, uh, particularly interior design. So I would go up and, you know, take him a coffee in the morning and take him to the doctor. And, you know, he was a businessman and we'd sit there and we'd talk about, you know, how am I going to get a job? Mm -hmm. And, uh, so, you know, we'd circle ads, I'd go for interviews. So it was a long process. It was a few, you know, like a couple months or something. And then he died. 
And I was just, I was devastated. And, you know, he was kind of like, you know, the best friend you have where you tell, he knew everything, mm-hmm. you told him everything, you'd call him three times a day, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, it was really tough for me. Um, so the, you know, he was staying in a friend's guest house, uh, somebody he was very close with and I had become close with. And uh, so I was cleaning up his stuff and, you know, just kind of getting organized and, um, planning his service. And so he, th- his friend said, well, what are you going to do now? And I said, well, I'm going to become an interior designer. I don't even know where that came from, but it just did. <laughs> and he said, well, that's a joke. I said, no, it's not. I can do this. I said, let me start by recovering all your furniture. It's all white. I can't screw it up. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he said, okay, you're on, I'll help you. And I said, okay, great. And so that's how I started. Wow. I'm telling you, and it just continues the same thing. You just have this inner strength that I think is, you just have this, well, and maybe it just comes from you need to eat, right? You need to, you you didn't have a support system. You didn't have somebody to fall back on. So you had to make it happen, but you did it. You know, you didn't at each turn when something wasn't right, when, you know, peeling potatoes wasn't right, you didn't sit there for 10 years and say, poor me, I have to peel potatoes my whole life. You know, you pick up and you move to California by yourself. I mean, that's crazy. That's crazy. I'm I'm so, so the thing is now I know what happens is we eventually, from your website, I read that we have clients like Maria Shriver and um, Rob Mm -hmm. Lowe. I mean, how do we go... She yeah. was one of my first clients. Okay. So so now we have declared, I am an interior designer. I have no education. I have no I actual was... experience, but I am an interior designer. <laughs> so that day that I went to the design center. Uh, uh, for the, fr- the other guy's upholstery. For, yeah. Okay. It was his name. His name is Barry Diller. He's okay. a oh. media mogul. And, yeah, you know, at just, the time he was, <laughs> he was buying, I think, Paramount Pictures or Home Shopping Network or something. Anyway, wow. so. He was, you know, forced to be reckoned with. And so, you know, very intimidating. I, mm. We got along very well, but he, you know, he was, you know, it, for me at the time, I was, it was, you know, intimidating. Um, mm. And so uh, um, I go to the design center, I'm pulling, and you know, I probably had a uh, hundred fabrics, way too many, <laughs> and too many choices. And so I was excited and nervous and I was running back to his place and, um, so I was going down the escalator of the design center. And since I had worked there, I knew my way around. And uh, Maria Shriver was coming up the escalator. She said, I called you at that store and you're not there anymore. I said, oh, no. I said, no, I have my own business now. I mean, which was about an hour <laughs> a minute old. old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so she said, you do? And I, said, I said, I do. I said, and I have two hours before my next appointment and I'm happy to take you shopping. <laughs> And she said, oh, wow. Okay, great. Well, who's the fabric for in the bag? I said, I can't tell you. I said, it's, uh, it's, he would be very upset, my client, if I told you, you know, what I was doing for him. He's very private. And I said, he's kind of a hothead, so you don't want to, you know, poke the bear. <laughs> so she said, well, I'm going to find out who it is, so you better just tell me. I you said, well, let's go shopping. Her, so, right? Yeah, I know. So we shop and shop and shop. And, you know, she, you know, I don't know. I just kind of made it up on the fly. And so uh, she's, we said goodbye. She said, give me your card, which I just said, well, here's my number. I didn't even have a card. And, uh, she said, okay, um, I'll call you. And I said, great. And she goes, now who, where are you going? I said, I'm going to this house on cold water. She goes, who lives on cold water? I saw Barry Diller. And she said, oh, wow. Wow. That's exciting. I said, yeah. I said, he's a great guy. I said, but don't say anything to anyone because it's a very, you know, he's, he's pro- you know, it's, he's a very private person. <laughs> She gets in the car and she calls him up. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So you can imagine now I'm on my way up there and then she's on the phone with him and oh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, I'm like, this is, I can't screw this up. It's my big break here. So she said, you know, hi, I, I just buried it's Maria. I just understand. I ran into David Phoenix at the design center. I understand he's redoing your house. He said, well, you know, he's helping me with some things, you know? And so she said, well, you know, have you seen any of his work? He said, no. And he said, she said, well, he doesn't have a portfolio. And he said, no, he doesn't. And she said, well, why, why would you hire him? He's, you know, you could hire anyone in the world. He goes, well, you know, what's with the 20 questions? And <laughs> um, he said, I watched him take care of his best friend in my guest house mm-hmm. for months. And he said, you know what? I can only attest to his character. Mm-hmm. 
That's powerful. That's powerful. Yeah. And, so and, I get, she, and she, I get, I get choked up every time I tell that story. Yes, of course. I mean, it's look, I, I, we know each other half hour now. It's, I, I'm so impressed. I'm so impressed by what you've created, what you, how you believe in yourself, how you really just knew it was important to be there for your friend. And that I'm so happy for you that it was recognized that somebody yeah. gave you a shot because yeah. of yeah. it. Like you said, yeah. he said, I can only attest to his character. If anybody could do, if that's all anybody could do for any of us, my goodness, really? Yeah. What else do you need? You know, yeah. Right. So then, of course, I drove up there and then he was there. He goes, thanks for the heads up on the call. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, he's, you know, he was a, you know, he was a, you know, uh, it's, it's important, I think, for people you know, in any industry, you know, it's nice to encourage people starting out. Mm. Yes. You I know. mean, it's the truth. I mean, to be there to turn around and do the good thing for somebody that's coming up behind you is it's, it's rewarding. I mean, it is a great thing to do, but to, for me, I find so much pleasure in doing the two, the process of doing, I love to watch the light bulbs go off. You know what I I'm think saying? If, yeah. If you want to feel worthy, you need to do worthy things. Mm -hmm. And I think by giving back is, is something that can help somebody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's, it's remarkable the what you have created on, um, you really, it's just really your character. That's it. It's your inner strength, your focus. I have interviewed other people throughout the course of the podcast that, every single person I've interviewed impresses me in one way or another. That's, that's what I love about doing what I do, that there is always something in each of us that we can find and we can say, whoa, that's pretty remarkable what you just did there. But there's been a few that have that inner compass like you have. I, Vanessa DeLeon comes to mind. She was at 19, 20 years old, and she just said, I'm going to create an empire. Like she, And here she is about 10 or 12, 15 years on her journey and she sure enough she's on her way there's been a few people like that that just know what they're supposed to do and so for you what's interesting is is that the knowing wasn't as clear as just knowing that I'm going to talk for you you tell me if I'm right knowing what you would end up doing wasn't necessarily as clear but knowing that you were meant to do something that was important to you Mm -hmm. Yes, I feel that, uh, you know, it was an idea, it was a thought, you know, being exposed to designers in the design center, mm -hmm. um, you know, coming and asking me for samples, and then seeing how they were putting, you know, it was all through exposure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, travel, other designers taking, you know, I've architectural digest back to the 70s, looking at that soaking it up like a sponge mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's really what it's that's what it's about for me you know, and you're I, smart too you can see how you smartly well, would see the chess game there you know what i mean the leveraging the one thing to the next i i mean yeah yeah I that mean, takes I was, a lot of nerve to do those yeah. things hi maria oh, i have two hours yeah, right yeah, now yeah, <laughs> right, right. yeah i guess you're right well i'm street smart i grew yes. up you know i'm scrappy so i'm yes. not you know i didn't have um the um I didn't have the luxury of calling, you know, hey, I need my rent paid or, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. give me the keys to the BMW and you give me a credit card, by, by the way, too. Right, right. So right, that right. wasn't an option. No, no. It creates a different um, set of skills when you are out on your own like that and and, mm -hmm. and not even all the way on your own like it sounds like you said you were sort of a runaway i don't know how you sort of run away either you well, do I was. or you don't yeah I see was. i was I, gonna I, say i ran away I, you know i left home at 15 i lived with another family saved up some money and then i bought a one-way ticket to california that's amazing that's that's incredible Mm -hmm. And if I, this were Super Soul Sunday, I'd probably have to go down through that road. I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, <gosh. laughs> I'm tempted. I'm, I am tempted. Yes. Maybe, you know yes. what we'll do? Maybe we'll do that. Well, I don't know. I was going to say maybe we'll do that at Kravit in Chicago, but that might not be the right place for right. it either. <laughs> Uh, maybe we'll have to have a drink afterwards. That's what yeah, we'll have I, to do that. <laughs> no, I mean, it's, 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 
it, I love it. I lo- I just love the, your tenacity. I love that you had the. I know that I'm sh- I'm a hundred percent certain that a lot of those moments you probably didn't feel the confidence and didn't feel like everything was going to be fine. There's no way you pick up at 15 and leave at 17 and get a one way ticket and it's all rosy. But there no, is. No, yeah, yeah. listen. By the way, also I don't want to paint. You know, I'm not. No. You know, from 15 to now, it's not like it's been. I've been skiing on a rainbow here. It's yes, definitely. No. That's what you know, I'm saying. I, right. I know that. I know that. But the thing is, despite how many times it must have been like, well, how am I going to get money to eat this week, and how am I going to make my rent? What I, what I, what I'm hearing is that there was just something in you that was going to survive one way or another. And that's the thing, you know, that's the confidence that when, even when I coach the interior designers and we talk about just saying my rate is 125 an hour, it's just have that confidence that you're worth it. And so I just think despite everything that was probably really, really difficult along the way, there was something in you that just went, I'm worth this, I'm gonna do this. I am a designer, that's it. And guess what, Maria? Well, yeah, you got yeah. two hours. I'll design for you. <laughs> well, Barry said to me, he said, think big and you'll be big. Ah, so well, that's kind love of, it. That's been my tagline. Think, think big, big and you'll be big. I love that. Yeah, yeah. Right. It's true. It's so true. What you think you create. That's why it's true. Exactly. I, I mean, that is exactly why it's true. The universe is always listening. So you mm-hmm. have to make sure what you say to the universe because it takes you at your word. So, so all right. Now, tell us. I think it's funny. Let's, let's, let's connect these dots. How that okay. first job is in the memo department at Brunswick, and now you're licensee with Kravit, who, is, <laughs> who owns Brunswick oh, now. <laughs> I know. I know. Isn't that something? So tell yeah. us about your line. Let's talk about the fabric line that you've developed. I've seen the pictures of it. It, uh, beautiful. Give us some description and give us some insight to the process of doing it. Well, it was kind of, um, you know, I've, uh, I've known the Kravitz for a little while and it was also filling a niche of something that they didn't have. Mm. So it wasn't more of the same. It was, um, you know, a lot of these are my proprietary designs and it was uh, things that we came to with the designs for and um, they liked them and, and it kind of filled a niche of something that they didn't have already. Okay. And that's a, it's, that's something to make sure we, we say loud and clear, yes. right? Yes. Yes. Because, yes. you know, well, look, it's Kravit. They, they've got the resources of, of, you know, whatever. Yes. And of course they've got Scott who is just brilliant with He's his great. love of textiles and fabrics. So if you yeah. want to do something like this, you got to come to the game with something that they can say, whoa, different, cool, need that. We have a a gap in that line, that area, right? Right. And that's what, you know, that's what the collection kind of, you know, we had a lot of designs and we boiled it down and this is what we started with and, um, or ended up with rather. And um, so I think they're really handsome. It's called Well Suited. Um, There's a great plaid. There's a great print floral called Kent Manor. Uh, There's, there's texture. There's, it's it's very handsome. It, I mean, that's a I, great word for it, and not to be it's, underestimated. It's a beautiful word I, for it. I ran into Bruce Grega in Santa Barbara, and I was he's like, show me some pictures. And so I showed him a picture of the plaid. He goes, God, that's handsome. I said, that's what I call that handsome plaid. So, yeah. <laughs> so um, talk about ringing the bell. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So uh, so it's I'm very proud of it. It's you know I have all the samples here in my office now and. Just to see them all spread out, it's just, it's exciting. It's really something that, you know, uh, it's been a labor of love. I love textiles. Uh, you know, working at Brunswick in the sample department, I learned about, you know, the difference between a chenille and a toile and a woven and a print and a mm. chintz and a, all that. So it's really... Um, it, it was it was a great foundation. That's the other thing there. I would say in observation of your conversation and your the thread of your experience is that you you pay attention. You it seems like you really paid attention at each position that you were at and took something from it that all together I always say you have to be prepared to yes. be lucky. So you've done that all the way through and now it you know, okay, now you're lucky, David, you have a line. <laughs> it's like you're okay. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. It's been very very fortunate. I'm very blessed and very grateful 
for the opportunity and I'm going to work hard to help them sell it. Mm -hmm. Now, the the line debuted uh, debuted last month in August, and um, I've seen it. It's gorgeous. Are are people loving it? Are they eating it up? Are you having? Are you guys also thrilled with it? Yeah, I mean, they showed it their sales meeting, and they said they've gotten tremendous feedback. And I, um, the sales rep for our area, was in yesterday, and um, she's she's shown it to clients, and she's gotten great feedback. Um, I've um, I've sent it to some friends of mine that are designers and, you know, I've gotten some nice emails, you mm-hmm. know, from them, which is great. And, um, so I'm, I'm really excited. It's, you know, when you don't know because you're, you're designing something and it's like when you, you know, you, you feel innately like, Oh, I love it. It's good. But you know, will somebody else like it? And it's like when you're doing your installation and you that butterflies in your stomach before the client sees the finished product and, Oh my God, are they going to like it? You know, and it's, <laughs> it's nerve wracking, but it's exciting. Yeah. 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 I think that, um, how, what a thrill to be yeah. in your studio and the Kravit rep comes in with your line of fabrics, right? How cool. Yeah, that's great. That's <laughs> after, fantastic. after years of having the rep walk in with Barclays fabrics and Candace's yeah. fabrics, right? Yeah. And Tom Felicia's fabrics. <laughs> so fun, right? Yeah, it's great. That's it. You're up there with the ranks now. Who would have thought, huh? Yes, I know. Exactly. I'll bet your great great grandma is very happy. Mm. I know. My grandmother died a few years ago. And so I used to tell her all about my, you know, what was going on. And she mm. was always very curious. And so I really miss that mm. connection. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm sure her and the great great are yes, yes, very, yeah. very much there with you and mm-hmm. right there and egging you on and helping boost you and so forth. Not that you need it now. Now you've you've got your your ducks in a row. So so tell me just a little bit. One thing I would like to share is Every person that I've interviewed that has had the privilege of working with the Kravit family, developing a product line, has expressed their truly deep admiration for the the, the culture of Kravit Inc. for working in the studio with the uh, fellow artisans there and, of course, the Kravit family themselves. Are, are you going to be somebody that is going to echo those same sentiments? I mean, yes. I haven't had a person that doesn't yes. truly say these things. Well, it starts at the top. You know, obviously, um, you know, Scott, Carrie, and Lisa, and then, of course, you know, their parents that have passed away, um, you know, his dad passed away recently. Recently, yeah, yeah. recently. Um, uh, but anyway, it starts at the top and it trickles down. So, you know, meeting Carrie and Lisa for the first time, you know, they're very down to earth. They're very approachable and very gracious. And mm. Scott is completely, you know, very gracious, very, but he's, you know, he's a, he's a personality. He's intense, uh, isn't he? Don't you just oh love God. how much he loves I, the fabrics? Well, fabric, what about food? Have you ever had dinner with him? No. I just had dinner with him and literally we went to this restaurant that had like a huge menu. I think there were three things we didn't order on the menu. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, I've never seen it. He's like, oh, I'll have more of that. Let's bring that. So oh, he's, That's so he's like passionate. him, though, because he's so passionate. Right, exactly. He's passionate, and I love passionate people. So yeah. he's fantastic. And, <laughs> and, you know, it's great. It was great to collaborate with him mm. um, in the studio. And then everyone that works there has been there a number of years, the, all the artisans and, you know, uh, people in corporate. And, and it's – there's a reason why, right. because of it starts at the top and trickles down, and everyone there is is incredible and supportive. Mm. I have um, found it to be true over and over again, and it and it's not just an on air conversation; it's an off air conversation. I'm saying mm. to all of our friends listening that it is the real deal that the Kravit family, the executive team, and everybody there really truly is very passionate about doing their very best work about bre- being a support uh, arm to the interior design industry and to mm. they're just committed to it and it is it's very uh, exciting to to witness it and to have just a tiny slice of being a part of it and so i think it's awesome and i'm i'm so glad that it brought you guys, you know, together and that you were able to do this line because, 
you have to look at it, you guys. You have to go to the Kravit website and look at it or go to David's website and look at it or make sure your Kravit rep brings it in to show you. You know, yes. it's just... It is. It's it, the, it is handsome, and that is a, a beautiful Thank word for it because it is. It's that um, genteel, handsome. It's like you, you're American quintessential. It really does echo exactly what you have described as your influence and your point of view. I think it's awesome. I think you did a great job. I mean, listen to me. Like I'm some expert on it, but I'm going to tell well. you the reason why is because i say that is because what i know to be true is that in order to truly be a successful endeavor on your part it has to be authentic to you and from what i've learned from you and what i see in it it lines up perfectly and that's the home run that's awesome thank you mm, thank you so awesome. much awesome i can't wait to meet you in person in chicago so we are going to be Let's see. Is it uh, right. Wednesday, October 3rd, I believe, at the Kravitz yes. Showroom in Chicago? Yes, yes we are. Yes. 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 And I'm going to have to come up with new questions for you. <laughs> but yes, we're also going to see the line there, too. We're going to have that there with us as well. It's exciting. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's very exciting. So, yeah, please. Yes, 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 yes. Everyone take a look. Yep. So take a look at the line. Please come out and meet the two of us at the Kravitz Showroom in Chicago for Chicago Design Week. Uh, the information I know is on my website, luannigara.com. It's also on uh, the Chicago Design uh, website. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. And I thank you so much for sharing your time with me today. It was a pleasure. And um, I'm, I'm looking forward to meeting you and um it's 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 been great. It's I've I've enjoyed this. I sure hope you like getting to know David as much as I did. Self-taught, hardworking, focused, and determined. Add to that his talent and creativity. Well, it's no wonder that he is at the top of the game in the interior design world. And if you'd like the opportunity to meet David in person, please join the both of us at the Kravitz Showroom in Chicago on October 3rd at 10 o'clock in the morning. Design Chicago at the Mart. Please come visit with us, listen to our discussion, and then ask us questions. And be sure that you see the new fabric line and trim line. You are going to love it. Promise, promise, promise. Reminder, I'll also be at High Point Market the following week. I have a few seats left for my Power Talk Friday tour that's happening on Saturday, October 13th, and then I will be leading the most outstanding panel on Sunday, the 14th at 12 o'clock. This is hosted by ASID National and High Point Market. I will be there with Kelly Ellis, Corey Damon Jenkins, Phyllis Harbinger, and Laura Thurman. And we're going to be talking about technology tools for your firm, like rock stars, right? Okay. And then Monday at 11 o'clock in the morning, we'll be at Gabby Home and come there for a discussion with Mrs. Paranjape, Rachel Cannon, and Bregan Jane about scaling your design firm. All right. I mean, again, <laughs> these are all previous guests on the podcast and I, one is just more outstanding than the other. And then finally, at 3 o'clock on Monday, I'll be leading a di panel discussion all about my Doma studio. All right? So we're gonna, I'm going to pick apart how your colleagues utilize my Doma studio for running their interior design firms efficiently. So you don't want to miss that one either. All righty. So thank you, thank you, thank you tons for joining me today. I have to say. This has been a um, really, truly phenomenal ride so far. It's not over. Don't even, <laughs> I'm not even go in there. But um, thank you. Thank you for all the iTunes reviews. Thank you for the emails that you send me. Thank you for the DMs and the private messages on Facebook. Um, tons of gratitude. Be sure to extend that gratitude to our sponsors, Kravit Inc., My Doma Studio, Camp Chroma, Article.com. All right. Extend the love and the gratitude to them because they help me bring this to you. And then end this day, end this podcast with some inspiration from David Phoenix. Think about what it is that touched you, what it is that made you think twice, what it is that caused you to have an aha moment, and then turn that moment into action. Okay? Decide. Decide to do something. Decide to be excellent. Okay.
Thank you so much for joining me again today. This podcast is a production of Window Works, your resource for custom window treatments and awnings. To learn how we can help you on your next interior design project, go to www.windowworks-nj.com. And if you're interested in working with me on your business, either through masterminds or one-on-one coaching, or you want to know how to get my book, The Making of a Well-Designed Business, or you just want to know what's going on in the podcast land, and where I'm going to be. All of that is found at luannnigara.com. Thank you so much. Have an excellent day.